I want to hear your thoughts on the evolution of Agentic AI, how quickly we're moving towards the true autonomy. AI agents can operate independently, take proactive action based on real-time data and learn behaviors. An AI that can act autonomously. So I would definitely say that we're going towards specialization, higher accuracy, a value to the player's experience by giving them specialized recommendations. It has been making waves within that space. If you want data-driven, accurate results, our system is, is more adapted, I would say. It's whether there are kind of security risks associated with these large language model platforms. Hello, and welcome to the G3 podcast. Joining me today is Anna Rita, Gen AI sales consultant and AI innovation partner at FSAS Technologies, a Fujitsu company. Anna, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. So at the most recent Mobile World Congress, Fujitsu's Udo Vert, who's the chief data officer, I've got a quote here, he discussed the agentic age of AI. Um, so that's what I wanted to discuss with you today, given that's your specialism. So I want to hear your thoughts on the evolution of agentic AI, how quickly we're moving towards the true autonomy, if you will, where AI agents can operate independently, make decisions, take proactive actions based on real-time data and learn behaviors. Yeah, I mean, the evolution of agentic AI, which is just, as you said, AI that can act autonomously. Yeah, I think it's especially uh, impressive how quickly really we're transitioning from these general purpose um, text um, uh, generators to really deeply integrated multimodal um, uh, capacity uh, G systems that are integrated with with tools and that really are more like a dynamic co-pilot to your daily activities as a human. Um, so I would definitely say that we're going towards specialization, higher accuracy, and and um, uh, avoiding a little bit the general purpose uh, models in within the professional context, obviously. How would you say that iGaming businesses are typically utilizing these large language model platforms in their daily operations? I'd say twofold, um, mostly um, from the perspective of, you know, increasing um, uh, player experience and operational efficiency. Those are the two bigger ones. Um, you know, specifically, you know, just smarter chatbots that are able to really, you know, give you personalized gaming recommendations and like doing that in within you know, with natural uh, language, which, you know, really, truly helps. Uh, in the back end, the LLMs are basically um, helping with like content generation, you know, uh, with scaling operations, with customer support. That, that customer support piece is one of the biggest ones across industries and obviously also for gaming. Um, and then... At a deeper level, um, and if you, you really work with the model and, and, and build onto it with, you know, fraud detection and pattern analysis are really important things within the, um, the gaming industry, I would say. Um, I mean, from, um, a user's perspective, I'd say just the, the objective is really to make interactions more seamless. Um, and, and yeah, add a, a bit of, um, a value to the player's experience by giving them, you know, specialized recommendations, stuff like that. That's definitely where I see like most of the um, efforts being uh, done within the gaming industry. Uh, and as somebody who's specialized within the space, I'm interested to hear your take. And it's kind of a source of personal interest for me is whether there are kind of security risks associated with these large language model platforms such as chat PTT, like on public cloud platforms specifically because people are treating it as if it's i don't know google for instance mm -hmm. treating it like it's a search engine but th there's more to it than that isn't there yeah I, I absolutely <laughs> there's there's a, b a big uh security um and privacy uh risk and awareness uh piece around this um, and as, I mean, for, for personal, for, for people in general, but especially for, for businesses, obviously. So all of these cloud platforms, no matter how deep the assurance is that your data is going to be safe, your data is still going out there, right? So, so any company that would like to increase productivity would need to, and, and really use, um, uh, their data in order to, to, um, um, extrapolate uh, uh, inputs from it to really uh, build a better experience will need to use customer data um, and in proprietary data in some cases. And that, that is just a huge risk uh, because at the end of the day, your assurance that that data won't be used to like train the AI or there won't be any leakages is nothing but, you know, just a, a 
something that you signed with a company, just a, uh, a disclaimer. And, and that is that is something that just is, doesn't fit some of the, the use cases and some of the companies that, uh, that want to use this. So there is definitely a, a big piece. And then you can, if you think about GDPR, uh, which is one of the biggest reasons why this is a risk, um, you know, for the data leakage. And then obviously, I mean, uh, maybe uh, it, this is meaningful in the UK, but uh, less less meaningful specifically in the UK, but outside as well, just the AI uh, EU Act um, and all of the uh, penalties that come with incorrect usage of AI, that, that's a big, big thing now. So absolutely, um, whenever you're using a cloud provider, um, the assurance um, that your data isn't going anywhere is, is questioned. And the, the context at the top of the podcast for Udo Wurtz's quote about agentic AI was around private GPT. Uh, mm-hmm. And that, that's something I really wanted to go into detail with you. Uh, it's something that Fujitsu or FSAS, Techno- FSAS Technologies, uh, as it's now been rebranded, has been making waves within that space. Um, it, the, what the, the, the pri- private GPT or on-premises generative AI systems. Um, so necessity is the mother of innovation. So what's the thinking behind it? Well, it's to address this scenario that I just talked about. So when privacy is not negotiable. Um, so we have clients and, and you know, several clients that be, and this could be like the whole company is, has data that just can't go anywhere. Or maybe in some cases, um, pieces of data within the company that are critical and just can't go anywhere. So we created uh, this this. Uh, this uh, tool, this system, truly to answer that need. So for companies that have critical data that they want and need to um, um, make more efficient to get inputs out of, but they really can't and won't risk um, yeah, their, their data security. So this is why we created it. It's essentially to answer precisely this use case. Um, it's the only way that you can use your data to your full, to um, its full capacity and, and not risk it is to keep it on-prem. So that's why. How do how does a private GPT compare to those your chat GPTs of the world, for instance, in terms of performance? So they're they're constantly being ingested with untold amounts of data. So are these private systems better at delivering real value in terms of kind of practical applications, data driven decision making, knowledge optimization, those kinds of things? Absolutely, for the the latter pieces, so for data driven um, uh, inputs, for decision making um, on like process workflow stuff like that, yes. Uh, but you know, to keep it very honest, if you want to be more creative, if that's your biggest uh, use, then you're probably better off with one of these tools, just because of that ingestion that is constant and 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 uh, yeah, it's with it'll give you um, a, a bigger pool of resources to work from. But if you want a, an AI accurate case, then definitely our, our system is better just because um, our system, if you want data driven and um, accurate results, then our system is, is more um, adapted, I would say. Um, first, because it's completely controlled. So we, we always, you can always know which data it was trained on, what, what it did when it uh, uh, gave you an answer, like everything done on the back end. So, and, and the other aspect of it is these clouds. Uh, providers and the tools that you just they just mentioned that are that are platforms are typically you you have less capacity to influence their development what happens with the future of the tool so this is also something that we bring to the table this boutique um, closeness with with our customers to really deliver a system that is adapted to their needs not in general um, so I think this goes really hand in hand with the agentic AI and um, the fact that we are moving more towards tailored use cases and tailored instances of AI and of LLMs. So this is definitely where we um, make a difference in comparison to these cloud-based tools. Uh, And in doing my research for this chat, because I know that I'm entering a specialism where you're going to know far more than me, what what intrigued me was the fact that there's not just you guys within this private GPT space. There's, uh, I don't know, I don't know if they're direct competitors or not, but I'm going to name them anyway. Uh, there's Pylon <laughs> AI, um, Nebel, Nebel uh, and Advania, um, to name a few. So how does your private GPT solution stack up against these and other solution providers? 
I mean, um, so this is, again, I, I will touch the um, boutique closeness bit because this is what we bring to the table that is, um, I think, a differentiator in comparison to these other uh, providers, which is really consultancy. So we can accompany your process from the very beginning as a customer um, through, you know, just um, a stack of workshops of, um, yeah, just consultancy pieces that really help deliver the best results. So we sit with you, we we go through exactly what it is that you're doing now and how that translates into productivity in the future because this is the big um the, the the big piece here right it's it's i think people one of the things that i see a lot is this misconception that you can just very quickly turn your um workflows into AI, that, that is that is a misconception. Again, <laughs> there's a lot of work that needs to be done in order to make that happen. Um, and with Fujitsu, other than obviously the um, the security piece, um, then you have this as well. So we bring that to the table. They're really accompanying the customer from the very beginning of their journey throughout. Uh, and also another really important factor is the support. So if with our system, and this is something that doesn't exist in the market that I know of, you have um, a call center for support should you have any issue with with the tool. So I think that's also a, a really cool differentiator. So you can, in an email address, so you can just, should you have an issue, just call this number and there will be someone ready to help you. So if I was a client coming to sit down and say, right, Anna Rita, can you help me develop a generative AI model that can be tailored specifically to my business? What's the process from that point? Yeah. So first thing is we sit down with 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 you. Uh, we understand what your resources are. What exactly is your objective? We help you figure out that objective because um, uh, in most cases um, there there's a lot of work that needs to be done. As I just told you, in, in understanding what the current situation is, what the effort is in order to, for example, integrate the systems for data ingestion, how we can adapt your data stack to make sure that you can get your inputs out of um, uh, out of that. So it, it's really sitting down with a customer, getting ready um, with all of the necessary stakeholders within uh, the customer's uh, environment and really like sitting down and, and workshopping like through co-creation, getting it done. And then we have these pre-packaged workshops that help um, if, if, you know, to, to deliver specific um, inputs. So, for example, we uh, it really depends on where you are uh, on the on the journey. Uh, it can go, you know, from the most basic thing, which is just to do a discovery workshop for your use cases, where you really you want to use AI, but you don't really know what you're doing yet, so you don't want to really start from the very bottom. Or you can, you know, we can start at a later point where you already, you know, have your data ready, you already have some idea of what you want to do and you already even know, like, for example, which integrations you need uh, to create. Three PS, let's like, say like you have like a um, an Oracle database that you want to connect to our system. Then, so it really depends on where you are in the journey. But the really important part is that we are um, capable of supporting any part of the journey that you are on, you know, really start from, from wherever. <laughs> And FSAS technologies, you kind of roll out different versions, a bit like a mobile system or, or kind of like the latest cars where you get a software update kind of thing. What advancements are these versions kind of bring into the table? What version are you on now, for instance? Is it 1.4? 1. 1. 1. 4. 1. 1.4. So what does the latest version bring to the table? Yeah, so this latest version is what we would call the beginning of agentic AI in our system. Um, so, it, it, and multimodality. So the two biggest things, every, every single iteration of the product, which we have every three months. So per quarter, we typically release a new, a new major. Um, they always have, you know, a couple big ticket items and then some things that are just like improving, uh, the, you know, the, the current situation for this one, for example. Um, the uh, really interesting feature is, first of all, multimodality. So now you can work with video and, and audio as well. You can, you know, um, uh, it, it use those uh, uh, medium uh, as well before it, it was uh, just text-based. Um, and the other really important thing, which is what we call the beginning of Regentic AI within our system, is that it lets you create pre-built scenarios. Uh, so with these pre-built scenarios, you essentially can, for example, some that are pre-built into the system for everybody is like an email assistance where you can just throw a whole like chain of emails in um, into uh, the box and just say, please answer, you know, with, with a positive um, uh, answer, just like negatively or whatever you want to do, like for example, or a coding assistant or 
something that, uh, like a, a use case that we see a lot of as well is um, a, 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 a use case, sorry, a scenario that um, allows you to check for contract validation, considering that, and this is what you do when, when you set up the system, this is my golden sample of what, a con of what a contract should look like. And now every time that a user just wants to evaluate if the contract that they're working on is, is correct or not, they just dump it in there, click a button, and it does this specific assessment of the contract, considering your rules as a company and not just general inputs from the web. And it gives you a really um, tailored scenario for yourself. So this is an example, uh, but basically now with the system, our, our customers can yeah, rebuild these scenarios, which is an initiation into the agentic AI piece. And I guess that, that leads on to a nice last, a nice finishing question, if you will, is what's next in the solutions development? Yeah, I mean, so um, security, security, security. So one thing that we are doing in the next version, this is our biggest um, uh, unique selling point, as I told you. So we keep really drilling onto that and finding better and more ways uh, to make sure that we are um, completely um, um, adapted and within um, uh, and and complying with with these uh, security rules that are really so important to us. Um, and other than that, it's really continuing the multimodality journey and the accuracy piece. Um, of, other than that, we also are working on ways to, because we, we have these um, preset uh, configurations, let's say, that are adjusted to specific sets of users. And we are now working on just bigger pieces. So just uh, essentially, um, pre-built configurations that um, are, are uh, adapted also to like really large organizations. So that's something else that we're doing. But again, our roadmap is, it, 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 we all always publish it um, uh, every quarter, every time there is a, a major release. And obviously our, our, our customers are, are always aware, but with a caveat that if there is any change, like a major breakthrough in AI that happens, then we will adapt to make sure that, you know, we do it, um, we, we do that first. So. Always take it with a grain of salt. This is our plan right now, but it could be changed if, because of AI, you know, we know that that's how it goes. If things change, that we might just prioritize something else. Anna Rita, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.